I've seen a lot of Facebook posts this week on how people bought um, bread flour or yeast and they don't even know what to do with it. They just panicked and went there with the store. They knew stuff was going to be running out or they can't find bread. So I'm going to show you how to make some really awesome French bread. It's really easy. Uh, so let's go. The first thing that we're going to do is take two and a half cups of warm water. Probably about two and a quarter cups actually. And a couple of teaspoons of sugar. Or tablespoons, I'm sorry. A couple of tablespoons of sugar. And we just want to stir that up to get the sugar dissolving. And the reason we're putting sugar in here is because we're going to put yeast in in a minute. And the yeast goes in and chews up the sugar and burps gas. And that is what causes your bread to rise. So we're just going to quickly stir that. That's pretty warm. Stir it for just a minute to cool it down. It's a little toasty. You want it warm to the touch, but you don't want it hot. If it's too hot, it's going to actually kill your yeast and you're going to waste a bunch of ingredients for no good reason. But you're, it should be comfortably warm on your finger when you stick it in there. And I know since I use extremely hot dishwater that I can tolerate a lot more heat than most people. So it should be okay by the finger method. Of course, you want to make sure you wash your hands before you start this. the sugars dissolve. I'm just going to get a splash of cold water real quick. Okay, that ought to do it. I didn't pour quite the whole two and a half cups because I saw the steam coming out. So now that we have our sugar dissolved in our water, we're going to just add the yeast. And all you want to do, just pour it in there. Don't disturb it. Tapping the side of the bowl can get a little, you know, I do have a clump there. Break that up just a little bit. It's just me, Tai Tai. There we go. And all we're really waiting for here is for this yeast to activate. And how do you tell if it's activating? My dog has a story to tell. Um, it'll start to foam up. Now you only really have to wait for a few minutes to see this happen and that'll tell you that the Excuse me, sir. That'll tell you that the yeast is actually in there chewing up the sugar. All right, it's only been about a minute and you can see that there's a little bit of foam starting here on top. That means the yeast is activated. It is starting to eat up that sugar. So now what I have here is about six cups of bread flour. You can use all-purpose flour for this as well. And I'm going to, sorry, my dog is laying by my feet and he keeps moving my stand here. I'm going to put almost all of it in. I'm going to save back about a cup, cup and a half. Um, different things will affect. Oh, I'm also going to put in a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Um, as I was saying, shush, Tai Tai, it's okay, there's nobody here. Um, you don't have to use olive oil. Some people don't like the flavor. You can use like a regular canola oil or vegetable oil. Um, everything will affect how much flour you need. Um, the altitude that you're in. Whether it's dry or humid in your house, how warm it is in your house, everything will affect the stickiness of the dough. And you can actually do this with a spoon. You don't have to be putting your hand in there. When it's like this, I go ahead and sprinkle salt in there. I have about half a tablespoon to almost three quarters of a tablespoon of sea salt. Now, the reason for that is sea salt is more coarse and salt and yeast don't necessarily like each other. 
And by all means, you can omit the salt if you have salt problems. Let me get rid of my containers here. So if you use a coarser salt um, and put it in after, you know, your flour starts mixing in with your yeast and egg or uh, yeast and sugar and water, it's less likely to uh, adversely affect your yeast. Okay, so when it gets to this stage, it's ready to turn out. Now you can add more flour in here to get it to where it needs to go, but you're going to have to knead this anyway. I prefer to knead in the extra flour. So, that remaining flour that we left in there, I'm going to put a generous amount on my countertop here. I take my dough out and plop it down. Now I do have a KitchenAid um, with a dough hook. I just, I really want to show you how simple this is. It's really not horribly confusing. All right. As you get the flour incorporated, it'll come off your hands. This dough will. So, in my last video, I talked about how there's some stuff going on in my personal life, and I never did elaborate on that. I didn't mean to leave you in the lurch, but um, my husband and I are putting our house up for sale. We're actually moving. We're going to be moving twice, which is not ideal. Um, but we have some aging family members that really, they need some help. They need someone to look after them. Um, and the family itself is getting older, so there's fewer and fewer people to do it. So my husband and I are going to be the ones out there taking care of them looking after them. They're just at an age where, you know, falls can happen. Um, they're far more likely. Uh, his aunt is 92 and she's just one of the sweetest women that you'll ever meet. Um, and she's cantankerous. That's probably why she's still around. She's very saucy, but, uh, just, just genuinely, genuinely one of the sweetest people I think I've ever met in my life. Um, but, you know, her husband has gone, her son is gone, um, and my husband's mother is staying with her, but she's not well herself. So we are putting our house on the market so that we can move out to the family property, his family's property, because um, he also grew up on a produce farm. And, you know, just look after the ladies, make sure they're eating good meals, making sure they're getting to their doctor's appointments, that medicine is getting taken that the house is being taken care of, you know, and I had someone tell me that I'm nuts for doing it. And I just think that, you know, one day I'm going to be elderly and I would hope that someone would look after me. You know, and if it gets to a point where they need like nursing care, my 92 year old is in good shape. She toodles around pretty darn good and she's all with it mentally. So, um, but if it got to the point where they needed actual nursing care, that is beyond what my husband and I are capable of. So that's a lot. Um, moving is a lot. I don't want to move. I don't want to pack. I love my home, even though, you know, it's a tiny little shack and in the middle of town. I've lived here for 13 years, so. But... You know, family first, that's how I was raised. You always take care of your loved ones. And after closing my business and now looking at moving, it's just, there's been a whole, whole lot go on in the last year before the world went bananas. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly wash my hands. I'll be right back. Okay, this, still needs needed but I had so much dough stuck to my fingers that it was like pulling on the dryer dough and that's not what you want.
Okay. We're about there. So if you see, let me. When you are kneading your dough, the the way to tell that you're done kneading is if it bounces back after you push on it. So I'm going to stick this in a bowl here. Let me get rid of this. Now, some cooks will recommend that you grease your bowl. I'm just going to take the the bowl that I had the flour in. I'm going to pop this in there and cover it with a towel. I'm not going to clean up this mess yet because we're going to have to roll out the dough. So I'm going to go ahead and leave my counter flour here. I'm going to cover this up and we'll be back. It needs to rise uh, double in size. That's going to take about 15 or 20 minutes with as warm as, as it is as it is in here. Oh my gosh, words. Holy cow. Um, I'm going to let double in size, which should take about 10 or 15 minutes, as warm as it is in here. And then we'll be back to roll out the dough. Okay, we are about doubled in size. So we're going to plop it out onto the floured counter. And all I'm doing right now is just stretching it a bit because I'm going to roll it out. Well, first I'm going to cut it in half because I have a little counter. And I'm going to have to pop half of it back in the bucket there. I'm going to grab my roller. And you don't want to push down too hard when you're doing this. You're just trying to make like a big rectangle. And it won't be, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. It's just to roll up your loaf. reason you don't want to really smoosh it down when you're rolling it out is because you're going to push that air out which is going to the air inside which makes it all you know all the holes I know we get technical here on this channel so yeah I made uh what is that Minnesota <laughs> And now we just roll it up. And all I'm doing here is just rolling this over and pinching it. The end is closed. All I have here is a baking sheet with some parchment paper on it. I'm going to place it on here. And I'm going to repeat the process with the second one. And this doesn't resemble a rectangle at all, but that's okay. Okay. Let's see. I think I'm going to go from this side. I got a little bit of stickage here. That's okay. Yeah, 
And like movie magic, I have my power top cleaned. So all you do now is just throw a towel over it again and let it rest for about 15 minutes. It's going to continue to rise and then I'll show you the next step. Okay. So what we're going to do now is take a sharp knife and we just want to make some cuts. These are relief cuts just like you see in concrete so that the concrete doesn't crack. Same thing with bread. Make some relief cuts because as it's in the oven and it's going to swell, um, it needs some room to expand. And then I have in this bowl, I have an egg and about a tablespoon of water. And that, my friends, is an egg wash. What an egg wash does is just make the top of the loaf all nice and golden brown like the loaves you see in the bakeries. So we're just going to brush this on. And lightly, you don't want to put, you know, scrambled eggs on top of your, your bread. That's going to make it just really, really nice and golden. That helps get some of that excess flour off the top. In the bottom of the oven, can you see it? Yeah, I have a pan down here. What I'm going to do, excuse my reach, is drop some ice cubes in there. As they melt, steam will rise and it will give you that crunchy exterior like you get in bake bakery French bread. So we need to let this cook for about 25-30 minutes. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes. It is time to take the bread out of the oven. Put a towel down here. Now, how do you know if your bread is done? You take it, you flip it over, and then you tap on it. If it sounds hollow, your bread is done. So now we just have to wait for this to cool just a bit. I actually like the parchment paper because I can just slide my pan out. Separate them out a little bit. We'll let this cool and I'll cut it open. Okay, you really should wait for your bread to cool, but I can't wait. So, um, I didn't cut my relief cuts in there uh, deep enough. So this is the splitting that I was talking about. Which, who cares? And there you go. Now you can eat this now with some butter, which I'm going to. You can slice it up, let it uh, kind of dry out, air dry overnight, and make it makes wonderful French toast the next day. It looks this dense because I cut it while it's hot, but that's okay. A little bit of butter. Mmm, that is delicious. And so easy. It really wasn't a lot of work at all. So hopefully you can see that, you know, bread, you don't need a bread machine. You don't need, you know, a huge kitchen aid. It really wasn't that much work. It took longer to, I think, do the dishes and clean up than it did to actually make the bread, um, besides the rising time. So, about 10 or 15 minutes of actual work. The rest of it's rising and baking time, and there you go.